Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Husker baseball schedule is released today for the fall and spring games. The first game the Huskers will have is against the Omaha Mavericks on September 29th at 4 p.m. You can find the full schedule on Huskers.com. A new ticket option was released to Husker men's basketball fans today called the Starting Five Mini Plan for $50. This option includes five games from the 300 level. Your options include your choice of three tickets for non-Big Ten games and two tickets for Big Ten games. You can find this ticket option on Huskers.com. Let's take a look at MLB scores of teams hunting for a spot in the playoffs. The Phillies beat the Braves in a close matchup 6-5. Minnesota Twins come back and win it in the ninth inning against the Cincinnati Reds, 5-3. The Texas Rangers blow out the Boston Red Sox, 15-5. The Seattle Mariners won on the road against the Oakland A's, 6-3. And the Arizona Diamondbacks pull ahead, on, pull ahead of the San Francisco Giants, 7-1. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 1 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich with five on a play clock, gets the snap, hands it off to Ramirez, no fakes with hand off, throws it to the flat, to Kent makes a catch, five, touchdown, Nebraska, great ball fake by Heinrich, flipped it in the flat to Kent, scoops in there, Nebraska leads it 6 nothing. Liz Grigorski, former Wisconsin Badger, line drive serve, good pass, Rodriguez the slide, wow, Andy Jackson, kaboom, and that draws some oohs and ahs. Lombardi, play actions, Bean Rush gets hit, goes down, and then a sack for the Cornhuskers, and Jay Sherman, the first on the scene, it's a loss of nine. Cammy Miner sends the serve. Good pass set to the middle. Andy Jackson off the ticket out. Match point, big run. They take down Stanford on the road at Maples Pavilion. And the Big Red's undefeated. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. And here we are. It's a Wednesday night show. A sports nightly Wednesday night. So glad you've uh, chosen to spend a little bit of time with us here this evening. We've got a full show coming your way. Jeremiah Searles has his weekly podcast out. We're going to play you a, a pretty good chunk of that coming up here in a few minutes. Get his take on the Northern Illinois victory and look ahead to Louisiana Tech. Hour number two, speaking of podcasts, another one, Kicking Back with the Cooks. They have re recorded their monthly podcast. It's going to drop tomorrow, but we've got a little inside, a little early edition peek at the Kicking Back with the Cooks. Yeah, we, we know some people. We, we, some we have folks. connections. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Uh, also, we're going to have the, the Big Ten Blitz. Big weekend coming up for some conference games going on and a huge game at Notre Dame Saturday night with the Irish hosting the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll get a preview of those games coming up as well. That might just happen. To, well, because we, it's Ohio State, we know it's one of our games to pick. Yes. I'm struggling on that one. I'm going back and forth in my mind on that yeah, game. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I'm leaning one way just because, I don't know. I, to me, I think, I know Ohio State maybe you could say has had a tougher schedule so far, but I think Notre Dame has looked better. But can Notre Dame get over the hump and beat right. Ohio State? Right. I like the, the, the quarterback for the Irish. Sam Hartman's a good quarterback. He was at Wake Forest. So we'll... Picks are not till Friday, so no, don't pump the brakes on that. If you're thinking we're going to do picks tonight, we're not, we're not going to be doing picks tonight. And we want you to be a part of the program. Always phone lines, text lines open for you, 402-413-2400. Huskers about to start. They, I think they're out there now. Started practice a few minutes ago. This is the day of the week that they practice at night so that they, you know, get their – they give a little bit more recovery time from Tuesday's very physical practice to tonight – and then they'll come back tomorrow morning with a walkthrough. That was another part of the fascinating discussion last night with Coach Rural when he was in here, Jessica, for the football show. Somebody asked him, what, why, why do you do more of a full-blown practice on Fridays where a lot of teams do walkthroughs? I, I thought it was fascinating to hear his, his thoughts on that. Yeah, and, and that was kind of a trend, I feel like, a few years ago. Chip Kelly did it in the NFL. Scott Frost is doing it here. Yeah, and then yeah. I, you saw a, a few coaches start to do that. Like, you know, like Scott Frost did it here. I know that um, uh, Oklahoma did it. Bob Stoops implemented it there in, in la his last couple of years. So it was kind of just a trend the way that 
you get him going a little bit on Friday and, and the rest of the scheduling too, just the, how he, you know, even the Monday, that's not necessarily what's a trend, but, um, you know, just trying to figure out what works best for a certain team and you've got all, a lot of things going on and, and the recovery of the body, which this staff is really huge into, is how to take care of the bodies throughout a, a season. And so, yeah, there's been, I guess, some research that, quite a bit of research that went into that full fledged Friday practice. And, and we're, I think we see probably more, a lot more teams than we used to see doing that on Fridays. So they will, again, kind of back off tomorrow and then go at it on Friday and then get ready for the 2.30 kick on Saturday with Louisiana Tech. I was doing some digging into the Bulldogs today. They have a int really interesting offense, and, and it's kind of fun to watch. Their defense, I really feel like Nebraska can muscle up and get the ground game going on Saturday against the Bulldogs offensively. Although we heard Marcus Satterfield say this yesterday when he met with the media. He's like, yeah, we got we to gotta pass the ball better. And Nebraska does. I was looking at Nebraska's like 119th in the country in throwing the football. Well, and so they got to get better at that phase of it. I'm not sure if this is the part of the podcast that Cole cut too, but that's what Searles talked about needing to happen in this game before going into the Big Ten because right now a lot of defensive coordinators are looking what this offense does and they're seeing that, oh, they're going to run the football, so they're going to challenge the safeties, hey, and, and dare, dare Nebraska throw the football. So to be able to, to show that we can go deep and, you know, that Nebraska can go deep and throw some deep passes and, and take the lid off a little bit would make those defensive coordinators and, and those defenses respect them a little bit more. Because right now, it's, they're gearing up to try to stop the run, that Husk bottom line. Huskers are last in the league in pass offense. Yeah. 14. This, but this came from the guy that with the run the ball hat? He, he was saying this? Well, he wanted to run, 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 run. Run, 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 pass. Run, yeah. run, 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 right. run, pass. You do <laughs> just, have to... just a couple passes here or there to take the shots to show yeah. that this offense is capable of doing it. Right. It is the big thing. And so that, you know, defenses do respect that part of your offense so that you can still run the ball. That's the, that's the part. That's the point of it, right, is that you got to be able to do both or else they're going to key in right. and, and take, take away what you do. And you got, I, I've always been a person, I think you have to find a balance. You have to be able to kind of do a little bit of both. And right now it's pretty one-sided. I'm fine with running for the football. And as Coach mentioned last night, we've been over 200 yards rushing in all three games. In fact, we're second in the Big Ten in running the ball. Second in the Big Ten, but last in the pass offense. And so for total offense, Nebraska is currently 99th in the country through three games, and they're 110th in scoring offense. So that, that part's got to keep getting better. I think that last week was a nice step forward for this offense, uh, but you got to keep trying to get better at that. And, you know, hey, that, that part of it might factor into the quarterback decision as well. I think it's, you know, I know Jeff's thrown some interceptions, but it does look like he has the ability to push the ball down the field maybe a little bit more than Heinrich. But... Um, I, I don't want to open that can of worms again tonight. I really don't want to just talk about the whole quarterback thing again I mean, tonight. again, they still probably don't know. Don't and know. we'll see how it unfolds. But um, that's the other thing Searles and I really dove into is that at, at this point, you know, as we got into last night, it's whoever it is, if, if the ball go, does go back to Jeff Sims, it does provide you a lot of confidence that you've got somebody that you can call on if you need to. Whatever the situation may be, maybe it may be an, another injury or if you need to settle, settle uh, somebody down, put them in for a certain situation, if the turnovers happen. There's a lot of reasons you might need to call in a backup quarterback. This gives you a lot of confidence to do that if Jeff ends up being the starter and Heinrich is the backup. Doggone it, Jessica. The, the injuries seem to be all hitting the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. IGC right out of the gate. Then the two running backs this, this past weekend. I, I know that Maverick Noonan on the defensive side went down in camp and Boodle goes out this past week. But, boy, it just seems like the offense has been the one taking the the brunt of the injury so far. Yeah, and the offense is a little bit thinner <laughs> at this point, you know. I think yeah. from what we've seen is on, on certain positions, they have fewer bodies than what the defense... The defense has been able to build a lot of depth. And no. so, um, especially, I mean, the, the wide receiver room and, and the running back room, you're thinking, oh, you lose one, you're, you're fine. But ne like you said last night, did you ever imagine you'd lose two, one and two in the same week? in the same game. That's what's really devastating. And, and here's the thing, and I said this last time, I, I have not gone back and rewatched the whole thing yet. I don't remember what plays either Gabe or Ramir got hurt on. I mean, Ramir kind of just slipped out on us, and with the shoulder, it may not have been real obvious that that was the case. All I know about Gabe is I was watching the team exit the field. He had kind of a limp that Gabe did. I'm like, 
but he played so late in the game, I just didn't realize he got hurt either. I didn't see Ramir or Gabe go to the tent at all. I think when Ramir got hurt, they must have taken him right off to the got corner. Yeah. And sometimes they do that when it's, it's serious. We saw that last year, I think... Um, was it with, maybe with Buford when Buford got hurt? They, he didn't even go to the tent. They went right to the corner. I believe that was who it was. But sometimes they, they do that. So it must have been early. I never saw it, him go to the tent at all. And then Gabe, limp, he, he came out and did a press conference and he was limping real bad. But I didn't, you know, I didn't see them working on him in the game either. So it must have been real late in the game, too. In fact, I, I did my sit down with, with Coach Rural. I walked back over the tunnel toward the old locker room, and I bumped into Gabe, and he's like, Where, where's the media stuff at? And he'll go across the tunnel down to the Hawks. Okay, so he, pat, he walked by me, and I didn't even really notice that he had a big limp, and so I was shocked Monday when I heard that his season was over. Just shocked. He's so tough that I'm sure he just thought he was, he was going to be fine, and they might not have done preliminary x-rays or anything then either, so he's thinking, oh, I'll just walk it off, and then when they started doing the testing and everything, that's when it was revealed, but... You know, I, I saw him yesterday, and, um, you know, he's, he's in good spirits. And you hate it. You just hate it because this is a guy that just came off an injury and is just, just feeling right, finally. And so you hate it for him. You hate it for Ramir, too. But, um, you know, I, I do think Gabe's got such a good head on his shoulders and a good outlook and mindset about it that, you know, once again, he'll, he'll attack it, he'll battle it, and he'll come back better than ever for it. This is the week of the schedule release. We had men's basketball conference schedule came out yesterday. David mentioned in the ticker the baseball schedule came out today. It's a really good home schedule this year for Husker baseball. The conference home series is Ohio State, Maryland, Indiana, Iowa. Those are all four upper, to upper half teams in the conference. Last year's was blah for the conference home games for baseball. Much better this year, and I know a lot of fans want to know about those early season weekends. They'll be in Arlington at Globe Life, the beautiful ballpark of the Rangers, to play three Big 12 schools, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma. Nebraska and Oklahoma have not played since 2011. The last year Nebraska was in the Big 12. Then they go to Grand Canyon, beautiful campus in Phoenix, and College of Charleston to play Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. The women's basketball schedule, I am told, may be coming out tomorrow. So we'll get their conference schedule tomorrow. Finally. It's, I just saw the different TV entities have, have made it more of a challenge, just trying to... But even the men's schedule yesterday really didn't indicate TV networks or times. It just kind of said, here it is. Yeah. So... But, but maybe scheduling to where your those TV windows, the, the dates, I don't Could know. Could be. I mean, all... Match them up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need two on this Sunday. We need a Friday night. That, yeah, you're right. I think on that. Uh, I did see... Is it Charlie Krem? Is that his name for ESPN covers women's basketball? He's got his way too early projected tournament field. Huskers are in. Huskers he have, has, I think, is a seven seed. So I, and, and that's where my expectations are for that team. I think that should be an NCAA tournament team. I, I think so, too. We, they should have been last year, but they just had so much adversity and in, in the injuries. And, I mean, it just was, was tough for them to overcome. And Allison Weiner getting hurt and, and, and Sam getting hurt at the beginning of the season. There's just so, so much adversity that team fought through, but then the way that they, they came together at the end and put together a run, even with Sam Hyvie getting hurt, uh, and they're, they're fueled. They're fueled by last year, and they have enough experience and talent returning, and then those freshmen are, are really special too. So we've, we're going to be keep talking a lot about freshmen with each sport, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, the, from women's volleyball to women's basketball, the, the freshmen I think are going to be big, big pieces this year and so I, they've got a lot of a lot of strong talent and I, I think that is that but that's going to be the expectation for this program every year Should is to be, be an NCAA tournament yeah. team let me put you on the spot who is tougher to replace is he born or Sam Hybe from last year's team well just because of the versatility and I mean I night in and night out I talked to Jazz Shelley and she said Izzy Bourne's been our most consistent player all year not not discrediting or taking away what Sam Hybe did. She had a phenomenal career, but she was yeah. kind of hurt and in and out of the lineup. And I don't know if she was fully healthy last season. You know, she had the knee tweak. And then I don't, you know, I just, I don't know if she was full Sam Hybe last year. And she still did a lot of tremendous things. And she was a tremendous leader. And she was a big reason why, you know, that, that team came together at the end. But I just think the way Izzy could... Uh, 
her match, she was such a matchup nightmare for teams, you know, because if you put a, a big post player on her, she'd step out and hit a three. If you put on a smaller guard to try to match up outside, post up. she'd post them up. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, just the way that her inside game developed, I mean, there were just times that she just, she would take over a game when they needed it, they had to have her, like the Kansas game, I think. Uh, there were just a few games that she just was instrumental for them and, and was just so, so, um, I guess just consistent, just a, the recipe for consistency for that team. So I, I'd probably say Izzy Bourne. Yeah, I, I would lean toward you. I think Sam probably had the better career overall, yeah. but Izzy last year was a good part. Doug in Norfolk on our text line said, Gabe got hurt late. I think he ran the ball towards the west sideline, uh, maybe about the 20-yard line on our last TD drive. He did have a carry on that drive. You're right. And then Anthony Grant scored Nebraska's last touchdown. So he had a carry on the last drive that we scored. So you're right, Doug. It was really late, and I just did not see him come off hobbled. And uh, so, yeah, it's just a shame that that, that happened there. All right, 402-413-2400. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Cole says it's time for a break. That means we're going to take a break. When we come back, Jeremiah Searles, part of his weekly podcast, Sideline with Searles. We'll have that for you next. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake em up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raised local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Discover new ways to purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Nissan. Right now, lease the 2023 Nissan Aria Engage four-wheel drive for $389 a month for 36 months. Visit us online today. With approved credit, tax, title, license, extra, 10,000 miles per year, $19.99 down plus first payment, $299 doc fee, do it signing. Discount based on sale price of $44,735. Deal includes $1,000 Aria Engage four-wheel drive bonus Nissan cash rebate and $1,000 Aria loyalty bonus cash rebate. VIN number PM407668. Offer expires 731-2023. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of polar bear on the loops. Man, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as a polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. The texts don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition. Guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10 year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty you have. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So, how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth? Consistently refreshing and consistently light. You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. 
0930. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates. Breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates may apply and may vary by carrier. <laughs> Allergy season is officially here. Your home should be a place where you can escape dust, pollen, and other allergens. But every time you enter your home, you bring them inside. John Henry's offers numerous products to remove allergens and germs from your home. Call John Henry's today to learn more about our indoor air quality products to breathe easier in your home. 435-5555. John Henry's plumbing. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Back in our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you. Jessica and Jeremiah Searles each week tape a podcast called Sideline Slice, Slice with Searles. That one has been recorded and ready for your listening pleasure. We'll give you part of that right now. We had talked about how good that uh, Northern Illinois um, defensive front was, but I guess your your big takeaways in the way that the Huskers were able to pull this one out. Yeah, it was running the football. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I know Harbor had some good runs too, but we ran the football effectively with our running backs. You know, and we're going to get into it about how we're going to really miss Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson, but. Every back looked very good. Every back looked like they were in rhythm with the offensive line and the tight ends. The, the guys getting downfield. I mean, Ethan Piper had that great knockout block when he was chasing the ball. I thought that Bryce Benhart and Nuri ran well and did their double teams really well. You know, and just there was hats on hats. And so many times our run game has sputtered or stalled or even had negative plays because it was one guy that was missing the block or one guy fell off the block late or didn't get to the linebacker the second level. And for the most part in this game, we had good hats on hats. Everyone had a good assignment football, and they were finishing with their guys in good body positions. And when you do that, you give your running backs a chance to make a one cut and go. And that's what I saw from our running backs. There was no hesitation. They weren't stuttering in the hole. They trusted their O-linemen. They trusted their tight ends. They got pressed the line of scrimmage, made one cut, and got north and south. And when you can run the football effectively like that, it puts so much strain on a defense. How much were you geeking out of that seven-minute drive? Oh, just spoke to my soul, <laughs> right? Just especially after watching the Eagles on Thursday night football, just jam it down the Vikings' throat over and over and over again. You know, just if any time I can watch an offensive line just get into a groove and get into a rhythm. And we talked about this on my other podcast, the O line committee that I do. And they go, no, doesn't everyone always talks about like the defensive line getting wore down over the course of a game? Like, doesn't the O line get wore down? I was like, absolutely not. When you're running the football at someone and you're just beating them off the ball and just moving them backwards, like you get an adrenaline rush and you get going and you start feeling you feeling a swagger and a confidence. And yeah, you might be tired when you get off the field, but there's nothing better than watching D linemen with their hands on hips or having to rotate a fresh four in there and that's fifth, sixth play of the drive because you're just beating on them. And I saw that from our line. I saw the confidence. I saw the mojo running up to the line of scrimmage. And that really just gave me a lot of confidence for them. Now, granted, I'm not going to sit here and say NIU is Michigan. But, you know, just to get that feeling of what that feels like is something that this O-line and this offense hasn't had in a couple years. How much does it sometimes take time? As much as this O-line has played together, but it's a new offense and, and – you're still getting Nuri hadn't played last year. Turner's now back at left tackle. I mean, how much does it just maybe take a, a few games to really get into that rhythm for an offensive line? Yeah, new offensive coordinator, new quarterbacks, you know, new type of run scheme. It takes a while to find out what your true identity really is going to be. And, you know, the great news is even with the departure of 
our two studs and Ramir and Gabe with injuries, I think that doesn't really change what the identity of what Satterfield in this offense wants to be, which is a run first offense. And luckily we have a guy like Anthony Grant who's played a ton of football, who's an extremely tough runner to go in there. And so it does take some time to find your identity. I'm starting to see it more and more on tape of what we want to be and how we want to do it. We started seeing it a lot last week when we were moving the ball against CU of that split zone concept and bringing guys back across the ball to cut the defense and really push the double team's front side and, and escape out the backside. So I think that's really more of what this identity of an inside zone, split zone type of offensive line and running scheme you want to be. And that does take time because you have to really trust as a back, you have to really trust the blocks because it's not going to be there right away. It's going to take some time to develop. And so once it takes some time to develop, then you start to really trust it, then you press it, and then it really starts to come together. And I started seeing that more and more towards the second half and really the end of the first half against NIU. It's interesting you say that because uh, that's been some of the conversations that have been taking place on the sideline with uh, E.J. Barthel and those running backs and, and you know, the Coach Rayola and, and just, again, hey, the lane's going to be there. Just be patient and wait for it. it, it that's something that you, you just learn over time as a running back, right? Yeah, it, reps. It just yeah. takes reps, right? And it just reps and reps and reps. And practice is great. You can get a lot of reps in practice, but you can't replicate game speed. You can't replicate getting tackled, running through arm tackles. Those are things that just come with reps in game. And so, yeah, it does take some time to get going. And, I mean, people will say, like, well, what about training camp? I mean, just look at the NFL. The offenses are abysmal in the NFL right now. Besides the Niners, they're just a well-oiled machine. But, you know, you look at – what it takes, it takes time for the offense. Defenses always seem to have the upper hand earlier part in the season. And then as you start hitting later in the season, the offenses start finding their identity, their rhythm, what they're good at and polished at, and how they can start attacking defenses. So I think that building on this game plan, building on this run game, we have kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be. And now we'll start being able to sprinkle in some more odds and ends to really keep the defense on their heels. Well, Ethan Piper, I got to get your take on that pancake because he's on ESPN O linemen were loving it across the country did you see it immediately what did you do when you saw it <laughs> yeah so Emma Emma's had her whole uh, soccer tribe back for the 2013 uh, recognition that they had so we were watching it from the house and of course none of them know what's going on and so I'm watching and I was like did you see that and they're like what I was a good catch I was like no no rewind that and I rewind I was like look at 57 and he just goes out there and just lays that DB <laughs> out and I just I can remember as a player when you're running full speed and it's just like a semi track a semi truck brakes are off there's no stopping right like bug windshield and he just splattered that dude and that was so fun to see that's an attitude play that's the kind where the whole sideline just jumps up and down in excitement about the block not even the run after the catch because that's just what you'd love to see is o linemen hustling downfield peeling guys off the pile smartly ben scott you know but like just making sure that you're just continuing because that's an attitude check for the defense too like hey you better not get caught standing around or i'm gonna come down here and i'm gonna smoke you one of the things that you've said, I feel like every week so far, as much as it's been a work in progress, but you've liked the physicality of this offensive line so far this season. Yeah, I like what we're doing schematically with getting double teams, right? Anytime you can get double teams, it's, as my dad used to say, numbers don't lie. 600 pounds on 300 pounds, 600 pounds should win, right? So our double teams have gotten much better with how we run off the ball, our initial footwork with our guards and our tackles, and even our tight ends getting in there and double teaming some of these outside linebackers and these smaller defensive ends have done a great job. And that just allows you to be more physical. Now, what are teams going to do to start combating that? They're going to trigger their linebackers really quickly, right? And that's one thing NIU didn't really do. But watching the teams as we get into Big Ten play, Big Ten linebackers are notorious for being downhill attacking linebackers. And the main point of that is because they don't want you to be able to keep that 600 pounds on that 300 pounder for very long. They want you to get the initial double team fit. They want to plug the gaps. So you get off that double team. So I've loved the way that we've ran our double teams and ran off the ball. We're just going to have to get ready to now to adjust and how we want to do things as those linebackers start to plug up in the A gaps and the B gaps. Here we are 10 minutes into the pod, and we've only talked about the O-line. Obviously. <laughs> um, quarterbacks, uh, Heiner Carberg, how, what did you see out of him? What did you like out of the way he managed the offense on Saturday? Yeah, I loved the style of play. He went in there with, I'm a tough SOB, and I'm going to run over dudes. <laughs> and I don't care if I'm a linebacker. I look like a linebacker running the football, and that's the way I'm going to run it. And I love that physicality that he brought to that position. Now, 
if that's our starting quarterback, I'm going to be like, hey, buddy, you need to learn how to slide because <laughs> that's fun and I love the physicality, but this is a tough league to do that time and time again. Like these linebackers, once they know you're not a slider, they're going to come headhunting, right? But I love that just attitude that he brought to that. And I think that filled everyone else on offense of that physicality attitude. He'd made some good throws. I thought he made some really good in rhythm to timing throws. That first, cat, that first uh, touchdown throw to Billy Kemp, I thought it was a great timing throw. Knew his read, saw the coverage, put it right on him. You know, the things that he'll need to do a little bit better of moving forward, those deep shots. Right, a few of those deep shots were hard misses, wide misses, miscommunications. You know, those are kind of the next progression of becoming a starting quarterback is letting you know when you can take those shots and being able to capitalize on those shots. But, you know, for the most part, I loved his ball placement. I loved what he did with the football, taking care of it. He did have that one sack there, um, sack fumble at the, uh, in our own red zone. You know, but that's also, it was an RPO. They sent a guy screaming off the edge. It's a tough position to be in when you want to throw it. But, you know, the offensive line's blocking for a run play. Um, but overall, he took care of the football. He ran physical, and he brought an attitude to this offense. He really did. He was, he was confident over there, and the guys believed in him. And one of the guys that really believes in him, and they have got a great connection, which we've seen so far in the, in the two times that they've got to play together, Thomas Fedoni. We're starting to see uh, him get going a little bit. And he told me that... This last week was his best week of practice, and it, it started to click for him a little bit. And I thought he looked a little bit different. His, uh, you know, he's always confident, but just the swagger is back. I, I, you know, I just think people take for granted as good as he is. And, and you mentioned this. You, you tend to think of him as a junior, but really he's a freshman. And, and how long that you've been out of the game, it, it takes so long to get back to that feel. And so I think he's starting to get there, and it just it's a process. But we're starting to see some flashes of how, how big of a weapon he can be. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, he's taken big steps in the run game in his blocking. You know, if you're going to be an every down tight end and you're going to be that true Y out there in 11, 12 personnel, like you never come off the field type of tight end, you start with your ability to inline block. And he's taken big strides from you pull up his tape against Minnesota to you pull up his tape against NIU, and it looks a little bit like a different player. Like you see physicality, you see him trusting his footwork, his aiming points, running off the football. And that, when you can do that as a tight end, allows you to do the things in the passing game, the quick outside screens there. You know, I wish he could have seen him switch the ball into the hand and stiff arm that guy, and he probably would have scored. But that just comes back with feel. And then obviously, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball send Fedoni up the seam and put a great ball on him and allow him to get a touchdown. So the more we can get him involved, the more pressure it will take off this young wideout group, this thin wideout group that we don't have a ton of depth at, and allow him to become more of a passer. And, and you saw the connection with Harburg and Fedoni at the end of that CU game as they were going down, plugged him, he got the touchdown. You know, so he's a guy that's just going to continue. Every game he's going to get more confident. And every game he's going to continue to get more balls, and he's going to get open, and he's going to make those contested catches. And if he can just stay on the path in which he's going, he's going to turn into a great weapon for us on offense. Well, we spent the first two episodes or of the season talking about the defense so we're spending a majority of the time talking about the offense here today but anything new really jump out to you about the way the defense performed uh, on Saturday or just more more of the, the same consistency the yeah. consistency in which they're playing right now is great you know it's a nameless faceless opponent to them it could be Michigan it could be CU it could be NIU they're playing with the same tenacity the same aggressiveness and really just the same speed all the time and when you play winning defense like that, you're always going to give yourself a chance to win. And we showed it where we don't turn the ball over four times and we don't give that offense short field. This defense can be smothering. And I know everyone's going to say, oh, it's just NIU. But, you know, that's an NIU team that went into Boston College and beat them, right? Like, that, that's a good – NIU. did they beat them? They might yeah, not they, beat, beat them. they beat Boston they did College. Beat, yeah. They did beat Boston yeah. College. Yeah, they dropped one the next week. But, you know, that's a talented group that had some confidence coming in here. But from the word go, Rocky Lombardi, their quarterback number 12, had no answer, right? He had no answer. He had no ability to go and where to go with the football. The run game wasn't working. I thought that the way that Tony White schemed up blitzes again with Bullock and Reimer and guys coming from every direction. And then the unsung hero of this defense right now is Nash Hupmaker. Yeah. That dude is plugging the middle. We talk about double teams. He's not getting moved on double teams. He's pushing the pocket when it's a quick pass game on first and second down. And he's controlling the center line of scrimmage. If he can continue to play at the level he's playing, he will give our linebackers a lot of free runs and a lot of chances to go make big plays. Nash is getting a lot of praise, and, and rightfully so. And he's, uh, again, he's I guess, uh, perfect timing because he's the Cornhusker conversation this week. So 
Glad to sit down with him. How about that? I mean, you're shocked that we spent a Even. good chunk of the time talking about the offensive line. What does he know about that? <laughs> uh, it's always good to hear from him. But it's it's also too though just the the fascinating his perspective of even just the running backs because there is it's it's a lot of you know back and forth. There's a lot of teamwork that happens between and and there's a lot of the communication that I'm seeing on the sideline too is just working through that as as they continue to work through the kinks and find their identity as as Jeremiah likes to talk about, but. You know, with the running backs trying to realize how to read the holes and be patient and, and see the lanes opening up. And it just takes some time to develop that chemistry and the patience and all of that that it takes. But, I mean, the, the running backs and the O-line work hand in hand. And so he's got a good perspective on those running backs, too. And throw those tight ends in, too. They're big yeah. in the run game, the blocking schemes and all those things. And we talked last night about Fedoni. I think it's getting better in that phase. Of things as well. Full podcast is up and ready, right? Yes, it is up and out now. You can hear the full thing. It's uh, 30 minutes, so that was only a small portion of it. So this is the full thing now. All right, and, folks. Oh, sorry. Presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. I can't some, forget that. I had some victory vowels after the game <laughs> Saturday night. It always tastes really good on, on that. All right, full lines, text lines back open for you 402 413 2400. That is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse is your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Back with more of the show coming up. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too. Making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. I'm going to show you my steps for making the perfect radio ad. This one's about innovation refunds and the ERC. First step, be relatable. I like pizza and puppies. Two, cold hard info. The ERC is a tax credit for eligible businesses that kept employees on payroll in 2020 and 2021. So if you qualify, Innovation Refunds Network of Independent Tax Attorneys could help you claim it. Three, go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln.
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For 47 years, Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont has been family owned and operated. We'll treat you like family and focus on providing you the best buying experience possible. Visit us in Fremont to shop Nebraska's number one volume Buick GMC dealer. And if you need a commercial vehicle, we're your GMC business elite dealer. Shop at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. GMC, we are professional grade. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of polar bear on the loose. Man, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as a polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. Their texts don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition. Guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10 year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty you have. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Folks, contact 811 two days. Yes, two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. 402 413. What's everybody giggling about? 402. I just heard Cole laughing. <laughs> and when I hear him laughing, it makes me laugh. Is David doing something over there? <laughs> That's what you got to be sometimes. You bring it with some oomph sometimes, Greg. Um, 402 413 2400. John in Omaha is obviously a big fan of Jeremiah's. Uh, yeah. He is. I think he texted in after he was on the call, right? Did he? I think he did. Jeremiah, national level analysis. The guy is a star in the making. I know that his career track is taking him somewhere else, but I could see him on Fox NFL Sunday or Fox Big Noon Sunday. Wow. Don't tell, don't tell him. I, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> I'm going to tell him. But no, he's... What I give so much credit to Jeremiah for is he studies the film and he'll watch it. He'll watch the game film like five yeah. times. Yeah. He's really a film junkie and he doesn't just watch the Nebraska games. He watches opponents games and, and he can really dive into things and he understands it so well and he breaks it down so well. And, you know, sometimes it can get when those football minds start talking, you're like, what the heck are you talking about? But I never feel that way with him. I feel like he always breaks it down in a way that it, it makes it understandable. But I mean, I, I've said this how many times now since I've worked here, I've just always felt like a lot of times the offensive linemen are the best at explaining the game. They, I feel like they have the best knowledge because they have to understand so much about not just the offense, but also the defense. They have to be able to read defenses. So they, they just know so much about the game. I've always learned the most in interviews talking with offensive linemen. Totally agree with you. They just have an interesting perspective on it. And a lot of fans only recognize them if they get called out for a holding or an offsides penalty. And that's yeah. way, that's so unfair to those guys with what they do play in and play out. And there's so much that goes into to playing, having good offensive line play, right? I mean, you're, you've got five guys that are working together. It's not just a, an individual guy doing his job. I mean, they have to work together and it's, um, it takes a lot to get to those guys all clicking together, and there's a lot <laughs> that goes into it. And that's what he, he talked about that he saw that was better this week, about it was five guys. Because if one guy misses his job, then you don't get the play done a lot of times. It, it doesn't work. And so you've got to have five guys doing their job at all times, or it doesn't work. And so he said it was a lot better this week, what he saw out of the offensive line. It was a much more cohesive effort a, a bit across all five of the guys. Because... It might have been one or two. I know he's been real high on Ben Scott. And even uh, Bryce Binhart has, has played really well. So, But I think all five played, uh, took a step up this week. And, man, Ethan Piper has been everywhere. 
<laughs> he has. I I'm glad you mentioned Bryce because Bryce has taken a lot of, of, of arrows the last couple of years. He has really stepped his game up, and this is a guy that's played an awful lot of football. So I think that's fantastic uh, that, that we're mentioning Bryce Bennard. He, he deserves every bit of that. Uh, Mike and Grant Adams had saw a lot of Cam Jurgens and Jack Stoll for the Eagles last Thursday night doing good things on the offensive line. Yeah, how about Cam is playing guard? He's not playing center because Kelsey's their center, but they want to get him on the field. He's playing guard for him. It's seen a lot of good things from him. Had a couple good, a couple things in the chat too. John Pinkston, John number two in Omaha agrees. Jeremiah is great on his analysis. And Andy Harris, where does Greg do his game prep? Is there a place that he uses? Do you prep yeah, at home? Mostly at home. Yeah. yeah, I spread out. I got a little office table there that I spread out and put all my charts. I did a lot of that yesterday morning. Put all that together. Which, there. by the way, I asked you what you do with your charts. You just throw them away. Yeah, pitch them. Yep. You should do something with them and sign them. I bet a lot of fans would like to have those charts. Right, they don't want like the Northern Illinois charts, so throw those things out. But, and Greg will sign them, so maybe there's a good cause we yeah, could do something with. Could maybe do that. All right, 402 413 2400. That's the number to be a part of the program. That again is our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Back to wrap up hour one next. Day by Day is the new documentary about Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers' decade long pursuit of a national championship. Featuring interviews with former players and coaches, as well as famous fans like Peyton and Archie Manning, Larry the Cable Guy, and numerous NCAA and NFL legends. Day by Day is the riveting, untold story of one of the most dominant, celebrated, and controversial football teams ever. Now available on demand. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Now get 3.9% financing for 66 months plus up to 37.50 bonus cash on F-150 and F-150 Lightning. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Greetings, human neighbor. Hey, Zendar. I brought you a little gift for suggesting Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It's a great game. Affirmative. Since the Pick 5 jackpot grows by $10,000 each time, it is not won. Your enthusiasm is logical. However, no gratuity is required. You sure? It's 10 gallons of wiper fluid. I have reconsidered. Would you care to help Marlex and I consume it? No, no. I'm good. Nebraska Pick 5 top prize odds, 1 in 658,000. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Back at Center Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Wednesday night. Huskers picked up a commitment today on the football trail. G, I love this name, 
J.D. Crisp. Oh. He's a wide receiver slash defensive back from the state of Texas, committed to the Huskers earlier today. He also plays some baseball, so I don't know if he's going to try to swing that with Will Bolt here or not, but he's from Altar, Texas. Uh, so good for him. J.D. Crisp was here for the Northern Illinois game, loved it, and committed to the Huskers. Says he's going to try to play both, both sports here at Nebraska. So another guy that could play offense or defense. I like that. There were so many recruits down there, and what a great night to have recruits oh. for whatever sport it is. I mean, it Fantastic. just was awesome down there. Let's go to Elkhorn. Greg, you're up next on Sports On. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fantastic. Hey, I just want to make a comment that no matter who the quarterback is, if Jeff Sims comes in, if we're the best fans in the country, do not boo. There's a reason he has a single-digit number from the rest of the team. So let's show some support no matter who comes in as a quarterback. Greg, fantastic comment. I totally agree with you. Thanks for, for dialing us up tonight. A, a thousand percent. I mean, he played two games on the road. Let's give him another opportunity. And it's not going to help with the confidence and, and getting him going if there's some booze trickling out. And... You know, he doesn't want to throw interceptions or turn the ball over, and nobody does. And so let's give him another opportunity and, and see if he can get going. And, yeah, I, I can't believe that's even being put out there. I agree. The next time we're going to hear from Coach Rolls tomorrow after their Thursday walkthrough. So they're practicing now, so they're going to get a good look at him tonight. I think tonight's practice will probably determine where they go. And if Jeff looks like he's 85 90%, I, my, my gut says he'll start. Saturday night. I if think he's so, not, then Heinrich would. I think so, too. I mean, I just don't think that they're in the business of, you know, taking jobs away because of injury. And Searles went on a big rant about that in the podcast this week. That's not what they do in the NFL. Now, it, it might make it easier once you come back. The competition might be there that you could lose it after you come back because you've seen what the backup can do. But, you know, I just I think this is good all around. And, and we've talked about it. It's Hey, it shows everybody on this football team you've got a very capable backup. But you can also, as we saw in, even in the first game, they utilize him to go catch a pass. Right. He caught a big pass. I mean, he's he's super athletic with the, the lack of depth at running back. You never know what kind of role both those quarterbacks will have moving forward. And I think they both have shown that they have the skill set that they could both be utilized. And But to me, I think if Jeff is healthy, he will be the guy that's the starting quarterback. Imagine the panic on the other team's defense if they're both on the field at the same time. Yeah, what do you do? They're like, <laughs> he can pass. It. Well, he, they both can throw. So you're yeah. like, what are we covering here? Yeah, and, so. and Heinrich can run out for a route, too. So it's, He sure can. And they can both take the snap and, and take off and make do damage with their feet. So, yeah, I mean, I just support whoever's out there. It's not going to do any good to I, – I, I just – I remember, too, Searle's talking about um, when – Taylor Martinez got booed and how hard that was for their team to hear. And, you know, it's just – and I understand that you're, as fans you get your, – your passion and you, you believe in somebody and, and, and Heiner Carberg is the local kid and he just got a win. But you do have to keep in mind, as you and I have talked about a lot on the show, the metrics of what Jeff started with on the road exactly for two right. games. Yeah. So let's keep that in mind. With a new offense yes. and all that. Yeah. yeah. New quarterback, new, new offense system, new offensive line. They're working through a lot of things. It just takes time for an offense to get going. So before we completely give up on a guy, let's uh, – Give him another shot. I'm glad you mentioned Taylor Martinez. He will be back in town this weekend. He's being enshrined into the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame. We believe Taylor's going to join Husker Game Day and talk with Ben and Damon uh, live on Husker Game Day. And Tommy Armstrong is going to be the co-host Saturday after the game on Big Red Reaction. That Looking is forward. awesome. Looking forward for I Tommy. I love that we're rotating between three different guys, three different perspectives. Yeah. You got offense, you got defense, you got a guy that's played both. both. Right. <laughs> so um, it's it's a cool perspective. And uh, so far, both those guys have done a great job. So. And I can't wait to hear Tommy's take on the quarterback situation here. I mean, he certainly lived all that when he played here. All right, one hour in the books. Come on back. Hour number two. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great.
That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. As a fan, you wear your jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. There's a place for people like you. The Cox Fan Zone. Play NFL Pick'em and Collegiate Pick'em for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card each week or even a $500 Visa gift card grand prize. Hey, Oscar fans, this is Greg Sharp. Say Fan Zone in your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit Cox.com slash Fan Zone. Go Big Red. Kids eat free in September at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee to celebrate National Family Meals Month. That's right. Get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree. Kids 12 and under can choose from favorites like a burger and fries, grilled cheese, chicken tenders, and more. Bring the family together. Dine in at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee and get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree every day in September. Dine in only. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up.
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Husker baseball schedule was released today for the fall and spring games. The first game the Huskers will have is against the Omaha Mavericks on September 29th at 4 p.m. You can find the full schedule on Huskers.com. A new ticket option was released to Husker men's basketball fans today called the Starting Five Mini Plan for $50. This option includes five games from the 300 level. Your options include your choice of three tickets for non-Big Ten games and two tickets for Big Ten games. You can find this ticket option on Huskers.com. Let's take a look at MLB scores of teams hunting for a spot in the playoffs. The Phillies beat the Braves in a close matchup 6-5. Minnesota Twins come back and win it in the ninth inning against the Cincinnati Reds 5-3. The Texas Rangers blow out the Boston Red Sox 15-5. The Seattle Mariners won on the road against the Oakland A's 6-3. And the Arizona Diamondbacks pull ahead of the San Francisco Giants 7-1. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890Nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich with five on a play clock, gets the snap, hands it off to Ramirez, no thinks with hand off, throws it to the flat, the camp makes a catch, five, touchdown, Nebraska, great ball fake by Heinrich, flipped it in the flat, to camp, scoots in there, Nebraska leads it 6 nothing. Liz Grigorski, former Wisconsin Badger, line drive serve, good pass, Rodriguez the slide, wow, Andy Jackson, kaboom, and that draws some oohs and ahs. Lombardi, play actions, being rushed, gets hit, goes down, and then a sack for the Cornhuskers in, Jay Sherman, the first on the scene, it's a Loss of nine. Cammy Miner sends the serve. Good pass set to the middle. Andy Jackson off the ticket out. Match point, big run. They take down Stanford on the road at Maples Pavilion. And the Big Red's undefeated. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. We are back, hour number two. Oh boy, this is going to be a fun hour. We're going to talk a little volleyball. We're going to have our Big Ten Blitz. And all kinds of fun things coming up in the next 60 minutes as we welcome you back to Sports Nightly here on a Wednesday night. Football team's hard at work. We're hard at work inside, cranking away. Uh, so it's all happening here tonight. BTN's got a little volleyball doubleheader tonight. Conference play began tonight. Penn State swept Rutgers in the first match, and they just got underway at Indiana, Indiana, and Illinois. Uh, Indiana's off to 10 and 3 strong. I think Indiana's a program that's getting better in Big Ten volleyball. So they just got it away with Illinois. Uh, and the Huskers will open conference play Friday. What a tough start. Ohio State's ranked, and then Minnesota, they're ranked. Well, and here's what I'll say about Indiana, too, is obviously they've got a lot of support for their women's basketball program. And a lot of times that will kind of mirror mm -hmm. a little bit. And so if they keep growing there and, and – if you bring recruits in to a women's basketball game and you see the support that they have for a women's basketball team, a lot of times that, that helps with recruiting. I mean, we see it a lot of times. Our, our uh, programs here take to a volleyball game. And right. that just, it, it, the atmosphere is just unlike any other. And, and you cannot deny that Indiana women's basketball has a great atmosphere. I, I hear a lot that that's yeah. one of the most favorite places to it's, play. It's a cool place. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, too, how so many places in the Big Ten, they don't play volleyball where they play the basketball games, they've, they've got separate arenas, smaller, uh, like Indiana's looks like it's maybe 3,000 seed one. The Devaney is smaller than PBA, but they all kind of have their own little arena. That, to me, is fascinating. Yeah. I don't know if it's that way in the Big 12. I, yeah, I guess it is. Oklahoma plays in that old, is it a Coliseum that they play yeah, in? Yeah, it was McCaslin Fieldhouse. Fieldhouse. Fieldhouse, yeah. yeah. Uh, Texas plays in Gregory Gym. I remember that because of the name. <laughs> uh, so, and KC just opened a brand new one, and KU's is fairly new for their volleyball facility. So I guess that's just the way it kind of is. Speaking of volleyball, see that segue right there? Yes, nicely done. Lauren You've done this a time or two. Lauren and John Cook sit down every month, kicking back with the Cooks. They recorded this a couple of days ago. The full podcast is going to air to be popped tomorrow for you to hear. But here's a little snippet of what they talked about this month. Speaking of coaches... Jordan Larson, when everyone wants to know when she is joining you all full time. I just got a text from her and she will be flying back the evening of the 25th of September. 
So she said, I'll be in the gym on the 26th. So uh, excited about that. But she's in Poland right now. Uh, the USA is playing in an in a Olympic qualifying tournament, which I think they have to win it uh, to qualify for the Olympics. So this is their first chance to qualify for the Olympics. And I, think, I don't think most people understand you have to, unless you're the host country, you have to qualify to get in the Olympic Games for volleyball. So they have a very tough... It's eight, eight teams, so they're going to play seven teams, and whoever has the best record is the champion, and they qualify for the Olympics. And if they don't do that, then the next opportunity would, I think, be in the because I'm not sure when that is, uh, when that will happen. Uh, but it's stressful trying to qualify for the Olympics. So they're in Poland right now. I think they've played two matches so far, so they have five more to go. And then she'll come straight from Poland to here. And will she be with you through December, or does yes. she leave again to go no, play somewhere? She's with us through the end of the season, and I, I have not talked to her about uh, what she's doing in, in, the, in the spring or January, February, March, April time frame. Uh, and I, I'm not worried about it because we're, we're, we're in beach, so we can only have two beach coaches. So it's, I mean, her and I really aren't, you know, I'll probably let, have Kelly and Jalen coach beach. And uh, there's... There's no really, um, you know, we can't, again, it's limited. So, you know, if she's not here, great. If she's here, great. But, you know, the other thing I was thinking about with her, you know, she's, this is a great setup for her because she gets to coach here. She's got, a, she's uh, in Lincoln. She gets to work out because she needs to continue to work out, trying to, trying to be in Paris Olympics next year. And so this is going to be pretty cool to have her here. I mean, she's like a player coach in a way. So she'll be able to play against your players in practice. Yeah, we're not going to have her do that. Uh, I, I think she'll want to break, but she works out really hard. So she'll be a great example for our players. Okay, here's somebody who's just in her off-season mode right now, and you know she's going to be busting it uh, and can be in there with them. And um, so I'm I'm pretty fired up about that. Merit. Merritt has gone bunless for the last few matches, and it's been the talk of the town. <laughs> and she has transformed into a different player. Yeah. She, she just looks so confident out there, so comfortable. She's making plays on defense that I, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, how does someone with her size make that play just because she's so tall and for her to get low and get underneath some of those, some of those attacks and get them up? I mean, she's... Backcourt defense, attacking out of the back row, blocking, serving. She's stressing opposing teams with her serve, attacking. I mean, she is firing on all cylinders. You, you watched her a little bit when she was at Florida. Does she look like a different player even from when she was at Florida? Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's hard to say. and uh, you know, It's hard to do comparisons. I mean, she had some huge matches at Florida. And, uh, but what, what I see from her is uh, she's competing really hard. She's embracing her role in our team. I think she's having fun. She's a heck of a leader. And, I, you know, I, I complimented her, her and Lexi last night after the match. I mean, we, we could have got sideways a lot of times last night. And those guys just kept that group together and kept them believing. And as you know, Lauren, it's hard to do to focus on your game and then trying to you know, we got two people who haven't played much. Maisie hasn't hardly ever played. It's the most she's ever played in two years here. And just holding it all together in, in a very tense and uh, competitive match. And uh, those, guys, those guys are doing a really, really good job. Do you think she'll ever go back to the bun? I don't know. That, that's, you guys need to ask her that. I don't, I don't really consult with her on her hair. Uh, um, but... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Probably whatever gets, gets her the most uh, followers on Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> Please start consulting with her on, the hair, on her hair. We need to know. Okay. I'll, this I'll is ask important her. information. Yeah, she, I had asked the first time. She just said she wanted to try something new. So here she we go. Also, I also heard her in an interview say that you changed, and this is, we're going to get into some volley talk here, but you changed her approach. And I, I'm not sure, I can't remember if she said you, it's now, she starts out wider or. <laughs> It, she was starting out wide, and you guys kind of narrowed her approach. Can you touch on that? 
we really didn't do much. We just made a couple slight adjustments. What we're, we're really working on is, is fundamentals for her. Um, she's got a couple little funky habits that limit her. And we really started that process in two a days. And it, we knew it would take time. And now I think we're starting to see the results of it. And um, so that's mainly what it is. And, you know, it's easy for her to, I mean, it's easier for her to explain, like, you know, her adjustment, her, but really we're working on uh, fundamentals and footwork. It's crazy to me that you have a player with so much experience who's so talented and it all comes down to fundamentals and yep. footwork. It's always about footwork. Yep. Whether you're a setter, <laughs> attacker, right side, left side, middle, libero, I mean, it's always about footwork. Yeah, yeah, we, we, and we're, we work really hard on it. It's very, very important. And, um, and it's not just merit. It's all of, our, all of our hitters have to have great footwork. And then same thing for passing. And then, you know, Bergen, as you know, as a setter, we, we train 15 minutes a day on footwork just for setters. I mean, it's just part of their training that they get. It's, that's how important it is. Can we get Bergen to cut down on service errors, please? Last night was her first tough night. <laughs> no, she, against Stanford, she, there's um, been a few matches where she's piled up like three or four service errors. Yeah, yeah. She, she, uh, Bergen has been, as me and a couple other people, we, everybody's been, had a really nasty cold all week. And uh, so I think part of, it, part of it was a little bit of that. And, uh, of course, no, these are big matches for Bergen. And sometimes that stress shows up especially in setters, that it'll show up in their serving game. Well, she does not look stressed. She looks <laughs> calm, cool, and collected. Yeah. I, she has zero emotion. Yeah. It's just, I, I'm, here to take, I'm here to do my job, take care of business, get yeah. my hitters in great situations. Lauren, you'll love this. So last night, we're in game four. It's, you know, 19, yeah. 19, 20, 20. There's a timeout, and I'm like, Bergen. Okay, you are going to have to get us a touch or a stuff on the block because she was getting worked pretty good. Yeah. Sure enough, they set her. She goes up and makes this move and blocks it back for a kill and, uh, you know, went over everybody's head back there. And that's what I love about Bergen. You just kind of tell her to do it. She goes, okay, coach, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said before, sometimes you don't even have to tell her. You just look at her. Yeah. And it's like she knows what she needs to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she comes off, she goes, I know, I know, I, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's a big fan of Bergen Riley. Yeah. And rightfully so. And there, I think there's a lot of big fans of Bergen Riley, including Merritt Beeson, who I just talked to after the game on, on Sunday, after the match on Sunday. She said she's one of my favorite people and that that continues to be, that chemistry continues to be a work in progress, which is what Kelly Hunter alluded to this week as well, just with... She has this natural chemistry already and knows uh, Harper Murray so well because they've played so much together and Andy Jackson, but some of the other players that she's playing for for the first time. But, but that, that demeanor, which you and I have talked about here, because I sat down here this summer and she said that's how she is and that her high school coach said that's what really separates her is that she never gets too high or low. She just is, is pretty emotionless, and, and that's what settles people down a lot of times in those big moments. Way different than Nicklin. Yeah. Because Nicklin wore her emotions on her sleeve yep. and was always rah rah punk. And I love that too. Yeah. But yeah, there's a there's kind of a, a an ice coldness about Bergen, like I'm gonna beat you. Yeah. And I'm gonna do it. Just you know the poker face, right? And my dad yep. always told me, talked to me about a poker face when I was playing basketball, about not letting anything rattle you or get too high or low, but just staying, you know, in the moment. And that's uh, she just you never know. And I think that's. That's calming for when that's your leader and she's out there and she's never rattled and is she, I mean, she celebrates a little bit, but it's just, it's, it is, hey, all right, we're on to the next. And that's kind of the motto of this team. And, and Lindsay Peterson for this episode of The Dig really talked about that's what she's been most impressed with with this, this team so far is that if you look throughout the entire non-conference, when can you look back to and point to a team going on a big run? They, for a young team not to allow, especially early on in the season, a young team to, to not allow big runs to happen. Yeah. And, I, you know, they just, they, they move on to the next point. They don't let another point beat them for a second point, and they, they stop it if they need to. It's just, 
And I think a lot of that goes back to Bergen. I mean, it's, it's a team thing, but I think Bergen is just so locked in and focused. Um, I just, I think she doesn't get too rattled on, on what's ahead or what's behind. It's just, what do we got to do in this moment? The full podcast will drop tomorrow. Coach Cook will be here tomorrow night with his weekly volleyball show. I was thinking about this today. Who's my favorite freshman on that team? And I think it's changed. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like going it over, okay, it's match. Bergen. No, it's Harper. No, I love the Jackson Laney. girl. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean it's, it changes. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable how much talent is in that class, and they are so competitive, and the, it's, they just have not backed down, and I am so excited to see how they handle Big Ten play because you know they're just chomping at yep. the bit. Come bring on, it on, bring it on, bring yep. it on. We are ready for this. We want to show the world what we can do. I, when you were interviewing that group over the summer, and I'd go, how were they? And you're like, phenomenal. You know, I'm like, they're so mature for yeah. being 18 year old young women. They really are. Each one I sat down with was like, oh my gosh, wow. Right. They can't get any better. And then it's just like, everyone was just so impressive. And they just have such a, they've got cool stories, they've got cool personalities, and they are so competitive. And they, boy, they battled it out when they're practicing in the preseason throughout the spring, but they love each other dearly. And that is a very close group and they want to win and they want to win together. And it's just, it's so hard to balance that, right? When you've got such a competitive group, how do you keep them together before you start playing games together? And, and I mean, they, this coaching staff has done a masterful job at, at keeping this group focused and, and together. And now here they are and, I just, they are so good. They are really good. Enjoy it, folks. Enjoy the ride. I, we, we got a bit of a cue back in May and June when they went to Brazil. They played some good competition down there, and they won all those matches in Brazil. I think we, at that time, might have thought, it's a pretty special group. All right, when we come back, we're going to check in some big matchups around the conference, the Big Ten Blitz coming up next. But time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. More of the show next. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Greetings, human neighbor. Hey, Zendar. I brought you a little gift for suggesting Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It's a great game. Affirmative. Since the Pick 5 jackpot grows by $10,000 each time it is not won, your enthusiasm is logical. However, no gratuity is required. You sure? It's 10 gallons of wiper fluid. I have reconsidered. Would you care to help Marlex and I consume it? No, no. I'm good. Nebraska Pick 5 top prize odds, 1 in 658,000. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe. I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to... 
have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knucklehead. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Kids eat free in September at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee to celebrate National Family Meals Month. That's right. Get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree. Kids 12 and under can choose from favorites like a burger and fries, grilled cheese, chicken tenders, and more. Bring the family together. Dine in at Wahlburgers at Hy-Vee and get a free kids meal with the purchase of an adult entree every day in September. Dine in only. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Discover the meticulously crafted and effortlessly iconic 2023 Cadillac lineup at Woodhouse Cadillac. Lease a 2023 Cadillac XT4 for $4.99 a month for 36 months, 10,000 miles per year. Visit us in-store at our newest location at 112th and Dodge in Omaha or online anytime at woodhousecadillac.com. With approved credit, must have a current Cadillac lease. Down payment, $2.99 fee and first payment due at signing. Offer expires 731-23. See dealer for details. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid mineral with protein or Sweet Pro block supplements for space feeding while also stretching your forages up to 25% better, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blauhorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <laughs> More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Tyner Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Wednesday night, middle of the football season, nothing better to do than take a spin around the league. We call it the Blitz. This is the Big Ten Blitz, Ohio State. Here to talk about the Buckeyes is Matt Andrews of the Ohio State Radio Network. Ohio State currently ranked in the top 20 nationally, both scoring offense, scoring defense, 3-0, and whipped Western Kentucky. Matt, do you have a handle on this team yet, or do you need a game like this week to kind of get a full picture of the Buckeyes? Craig, it's a large measuring stick picture game. You're exactly right. There's a feel that this team will play like it did last week and better than they have the first two weeks, but that's strictly based off what we expect to see from the Buckeye squad. The hope is the O-line, which was much improved last week, can continue to grow. It is a process. Buckeye fans don't understand that, but uh, we're spoiled here. And, and, and the other part of this is the defense was pretty good last year for 10 weeks, and then the bottom fell out against Michigan and Georgia. So you think you know what you're going to see, but, hey, this is a good Notre Dame team. So it, it's going to be an intriguing matchup. I think it will be a very close game and still some figuring questions to be answered this week. Well, Ryan Day has answered one. That he has settled on a, on a quarterback. Give me the grade <laughs> card on him through three weeks. Yeah, I think Kyle McCord is playing at a solid B level right now. Uh, last week was tremendous. 
He was not great at Indiana. He was not great against Youngstown State, but he did enough to win that job. Now, Devin Brown wasn't bad either, but apparently the, the separation has been to the point where when McCord was named the starter and the man going forward against Western, we saw Kyle out there. Now, again, he's only played five games as a starter, but you, you watch him in the three games this year, especially in that third game, he was much more relaxed. The confidence is there. He played very well against Western Kentucky. Now, look, their defense is not a top 500 aim defense for sure. So we'll see how that goes when changes come this week, how McCord responds. But the feeling is he's now the guy under Day's system. There's all sorts of confidence in what the head coach is seeing with the quarterback considering the history here. Uh, we'll see, but I, I feel like McCord is settled in very nicely, and they're starting to try to get that running game chewed up a little bit, which is going to help everybody out. No doubt. Let's flip the script. Let's talk about the Irish. Uh, they look pretty solid yeah. through their first couple of weeks. Kind of give us a scouting report, and, and what are some of the keys in your eyes for this one? Well, I've studied some of Sam Hartman's numbers, not a ton of the film. That's for Jim and Paul to do, but... Sam Hartman is a winner, man. It reminds me a tad of how JT Barrett did it for Ohio State. Just he finds ways to win. You look, he's not turned the ball over hardly at all. Uh, th this is a great quarterback that I think plays really well in the system. Marcus Freeman and company, I think they learned a little bit from the opener here last year just in terms of getting guys settled in. Now, look, they're four games in, so that's going to be a big challenge. Who will fill in at the – and there's a ton of spreading their wealth. So I don't think they have it. You know, they don't have that tight end they had a year ago in Mayer. They've got very balanced attack. They've got a great running game. You certainly know that Notre Dame is a team that would love to run the football, but thus far they've done it pretty well. And they play great defense, as I mentioned in the last question. It's a top five matchup of defenses. So Ohio State will be the, certainly uh, their, their favorite, but they're not going to have – they're not going to have much of an advantage, in my point, of going over there. The night game, I don't, I don't see much of an issue there, uh, home or, or road, day or night. I, I think the Buckeyes can look through that. There'll be Ohio State fans there, but not what we've seen Nebraska do in the past, not what we've seen Georgia do in the past, because I think Notre Dame fans are, are more keyed up for this one at night than ever with this green out, if you will. But it, sh it should be a great environment. It, hey, it's one of the great – places to watch a football game and i'm excited to get over there i cannot wait 6 30 central on nbc matt andrews of the buckeyes network matt we appreciate it have a great time in in south bend all the best the big red thanks greg big 10 blitz michigan here to talk about the wolverines angeli changelos of the detroit news michigan off to a 3-0 and start looking to win their 15th consecutive big 10 game this week as they open conference play with the rutgers scarlet knights angelique do you have a gauge yet on this team, or has the competition just not been good enough to really get a feel? Yeah, that's really been my question to the players is, like, what do you know about your team? And, um, you know, they're saying all the right things, but I, I've got – I mean, I think the defense is good. I think that you've got a good sense for, for where this Michigan defense is. Yes, they've been playing overmatched teams and, and probably building up their stats that way with three field goals they've given up and a touchdown, but I, I'm – I'm still, the jury's out in terms of the offense. You saw J.J. McCarthy, Mr. Pre precision passer those first two games, and then, you know, he had a lapse last week and had three picks. And the offensive line to me is still a work in progress, and I think you're going to see a switch this week. You're going to, the, the transfer from Arizona State, Ladarius Henderson will, I expect him to be at left tackle, and they've kicked Carson Barnhart from left tackle to right tackle. Uh, bumping Miles Hinton, and so I, I, I'm really curious to see how that line works because that's the one I projected, um, and I think a lot of people did, uh, would be the line. And I do think the running game is is getting back. Uh, Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards both coming off of, of surgeries in the off season, and I think people saw Blake Corum, but you know, coming back last week. And but yeah, I mean, it's going to be they're finally going to have a test against Rutgers, and, and Rutgers has been a test for Michigan the last couple of years. Plays them tough, and uh, I think we'll have some of those answers then Saturday mm, about 4:30. Angelique, any impact at all that that they haven't had their head coach on the sidelines for the first three games? You know, I, th I think it's been a little disjointed. I, I thought it was a, a nice concept to give four coaches, assistant coaches, a chance to 
um, kind of audition as head coaches these first three games. I mean, he split the game, uh, the second game, with Jay Harbaugh and Mike Hart. And, uh, you know, I, I do think that maybe it might have been better to have some consistency with, with one in a room. But um, I, the players say, yes, they're looking forward to having Jim Harbaugh back. But they've also said before going into this that it's, it's such a well-oiled machine. Yes, they'll miss him, but they they can they can do this without him. So, um, I think you're going to see a Jim Harbaugh, though, on Saturday, very invigorated and, and wanting to, to maybe show people how much he was missed and uh, really be very hands-on, maybe more so than, than we, we've seen him on Saturday and, and being very vocal with officials and you know, just saying, I'm back. That kind of, That's the sense I get, that it, it's going to be quite a, uh, a response to him from the fans, and, and I think he's going to really, really dig being uh, back after missing the first three games. Well, you mentioned it. Rutgers is the opponent on Saturday. They have at times really pushed the Wolverines an overtime game a few years back in Piscataway. What about this one? What's, what, what intrigues you about this matchup? Well, I think this is going to be about Michigan's defense. I think that you haven't seen a lot of big plays out of, out of Rutgers' offense, and, and I think that's been a strength of Michigan. You know, they may have they, – they've played the first three weeks without – a couple key starters in their secondary in, in safety, Rod Moore and, and corner Will Johnson. I, I think Will Johnson's probably closer, the two, to getting back. Um, but I think they've, they've, they've played pretty well with, with some different pieces back there. But I do think Michigan's defense will, will really have to carry it here. I think Rutgers' defense is very good. And um, I think, again, you see more Blake Corum and, and getting his really looking more – back to his form and he said that first 54 54 yard run he had uh the first play last week he really felt like he was back he made cuts that made, didn't he didn't think about his knee so i think you're going to need a lot of contributions from blake quorum and, and going back to their smash approach with their offensive line and, and dominant run game and you let jj mccarthy settle back in and and you know he's got to come get over the the three interception game and and I, I would think that they'd ease him back into to trying to achieve that. Michigan hosting Rutgers, 11 o'clock Central on BTN. Angelique Shimgatos of the Detroit News. Angelique, we appreciate it. Thank you. See you next week in Nebraska. Big Ten Blitz, Maryland. Here to talk about the Terrapin, Scott Green of Terrapin Nation. Maryland off to a 3-0 and start, getting ready for conference play. Scott, one thing that struck me as I've seen a couple of the games already is Maryland's been digging some early holes in game. I'm, I'm sure Coach Loxley wants to reverse that trend a bit. Yeah, I mean, you look at the final scores and you think, you know, everything went according to plan. But, you know, two straight games now dug very early 14 nothing holes. You had Tonga Bailoa throwing a pick six uh, against Charlotte. And then, you know, another tough start on Friday night against Virginia. But... You know, they were able to methodically wear these teams down, do the things they were supposed to do, and just kind of take over in the fourth quarter. But obviously this week you got Big Ten play starting, and, you know, this is where it's at. Defensively, it looks like Maryland has really improved. What, what's been your, your three-game take on that side of the ball? Yeah, you know, as far as the defense go, you know, the biggest thing has been building depth along that defensive line. Um, you know, the big thing with Maryland, especially since Brian Williams has taken over, you know, they really like to use a, a pretty deep rotation there um, along the D-line and, you know, on the edge with some of those linebackers. And, you know, I think having guys fresh has really helped, you know, as far as the defense goes. And, you know, they're kind of a bend but don't break, but they've done a great job, um, you know, especially, you know, keeping teams out of the end zone. So, yeah, so far I think the defense has looked really good. All right, as you mentioned earlier, it's on the conference play this week, going to East Lansing to take on a Michigan State team and program that certainly – is in the midst of a bunch of turmoil. Uh, how do you size this matchup? What are some of the keys from the Maryland point of view to get a win on the road? Yeah, I mean, I feel like turmoil might, might almost be under understating things. Um, but, yeah, you know, they're coming off a really tough loss against Washington at home last week. Um, you know, I think for Maryland, the key is just kind of, kind of be not looking ahead or not just assuming that they're going to come out and play poorly like they did last week. You know, oftentimes when teams face this kind of adversity, you know, they'll have a down game, but then they'll come back stronger than ever the following week. Um, so I think for Maryland, they just need to make sure they mentally stay in it, especially early. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, they, they've played well enough. Um, I think they match up fairly well, and I just think it should be a pretty good game. They've got a good shot at going 4-0 here. 
What's been the recent history with the, with these two teams in games? What has there been a pattern at all in the last four or five years? Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd say there's been a pattern, but you know they, they usually play pretty close games. Um, you know, always have kind of some crazy stuff that happens, but you know I feel like on the road in this league it's always tough. It's always going to be tough, and you know the students there are right on top of you. Um, they like to talk, <laughs> so I think the players realize that, but. You know, I think if you're a Maryland player, you just kind of kind of have some fun with it um, and, you know, go in with the right attitude. Again, I think men mentally how they approach this game early on is going to be the key. Maryland visits Spartan Stadium Saturday, 2.30 Central on NBC. Scott Green of Terrapin Nation with us. Scott, we appreciate the update. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Scott and all of our contributors appear with us on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse, Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, phone lines, text lines open up for you again. 402-413-2400. We're back with more of the show next. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe in a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> See shelter agent Terry Dingwell in Fremont, Bryce Lamb in Aurora, or Zane Belfour in Sydney today. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals and will share information with them to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. You can trust Innovation Refunds with your small business's ERC claim because of their SOC 2 Type 1 security compliance. Without this, how can you be sure a company can protect your information? It's not like here on the radio where all you need to be secure is a sensor button. My password to my bank account is Ty's cool password 1. Uh-oh. Luckily, Innovation Refunds is more reliable. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS to get started. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of polar bear on the loops. Man, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as the polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. The techs don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition, guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10-year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty you have. There are a lot of rates out there, and it can be tough to find the right one. Well, let's make it easy. With FNBO's special offer CD of 5.5% APY for 3, 7, or 17 months, you can earn more, save more, and do more. That's 5.5% annual percentage yield for 3, 7, or 17 months at your nearest FNBO location with a minimum deposit of $500 and an FNBO Premier checking account. So stop on by and give your savings a great big boost with the Great Big Small Bank. FNBO, member FDIC. 
Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. We are back inside the Acres Broadcast Center. Acres is the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you here on a Wednesday night. So it's, it's kind of cool now because either we're into conference for a lot of teams this week or good non-conference games like Ohio State and Notre Dame. I, this is going to be a fun weekend for college football. It really is. For as blah as last weekend Ooh. was, they're making up for it this weekend. There's yeah. a lot of great matchups across the board and um, all day long, too, with that. That's what's, I love the fact that, you know, it used to be just, hey, you had the primetime game, but there's good matchups that you can see all day long with Big Noon and, and CBS, Peacock, or NBC. We got the deuce on right now. They're kind of previewing Clemson, Florida State. That's a heck of a matchup. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, people are probably counting Clemson out, but I wouldn't be surprised if Clemson found a way to win this one. To Death Alley, so they get a home game to take on uh, FSU. You've got just big games, a couple big games in the Pac-12. Utah and UCLA is a really good matchup. Uh, so there's just some good games. Coach Prime out in Oregon. <laughs> I thought you said you were done talking about Colorado. <laughs> I was. I slept up there. <laughs> uh, we had a text from Dennis. Wants to know what a road game is like for us. Like, say you're playing at Maryland at 6 o'clock. Well, our pregame goes on four hours before. So generally, we leave the hotel about five hours before kickoff, get on site, get set up in the booth, and get ready to roll. And then... Boy, about an hour after the game's over, we're getting on buses and heading back. Yeah, so at Colorado, it was at 10 a.m. there. <sighs> and so we were on the bus at 345. Because we stayed in East Denver. Yeah. Long so ways away. 345 a.m., we were all boarding that bus and got there. And, um, yeah, the, the team usually gets there two hours before. And mm -hmm. I've, I've said this several times, but it's a little bit different warm-up schedule than what we've seen in the past. A lot of times you see guys running out there and, and doing some things before. It, not as much by any, it, they don't, a lot of guys don't come out until they all come out as a team. And then they go through team drills, the, the stretches, the warm ups, and then they go to their individual drills. And that's about 50 minutes, 50, 45 minutes on the clock. So it's a little bit different too. So we don't really see much of the team warming up until well inside that hour on the, on the clock, clock mark. And yeah. Then, yeah, once we play the game, have some post-game press conferences, Coach Rule does his presser, and then we're getting on that bus and we're getting to the, to the airplane, which is nice because you get back pretty quickly. We got back before dark from Boulder. Um, it's a rat race for you and I in post-game because I'm packing and getting down there. You're heading into the locker room trying to grab some players, get those interviews, and get them back here for us to hear uh, on the network. So it's a little bit a little hectic when the game ends. 
And then, you, you know, there's a lot of people standing around the buses, parents, those fans trying to see their Huskers. It's a little crazy. It's probably, what, hour and a half max that we are all loaded up on the bus? Oh, it's usually by hour, hour 15, and we're rolling yeah. back out. And That's a lot to do in, yeah. in that amount of time. So, and then you get to the, and depending on where the airplane is in the airport, sometimes it's like, so we flew out of Denver, so it was about, oh. what, a 45-minute <laughs> bus Drive. Seemed like two hours. Yeah, and then the, but sometimes it's right there. Yep. And Illinois so is right there. You, yeah. They load up pretty quickly and get on and, and get up in the air, and we get back pretty quickly. And, and again, a lot of it is trying to make sure that these guys are getting back, taking care of their their bodies and, and doing recovery, and they're watching film. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. It is. We even came back right after the game in Ireland. Yeah. We went to the airport. We sat there quite a while, it seemed like. Did you have to go through customs? I had to go through customs. And everybody had to go through security. You had to go through two securities. Yeah, and then the pilots had to wait. To We were there maybe an hour and a half before the pilots even got there because I think they were on a clock. They couldn't leave until <laughs> maybe after midnight. Wasn't that right? And then we... Yeah. And then, man, whew, that was... So I remember that after that, I was leaning over to try to help somebody get a security bed, and I bonked my face, and I had a black eye for an entire week. After the, that's coming right. back from Ireland, I had that big cut on my that's eye. That's right. <laughs> that's what I always think about in that airport coming back from that game. Well, that game start. What time did that game start? Ireland time. It started at like nine thirty here, wasn't it, or something like that? I or no, eleven thirty here. So it was like five thirty in the afternoon. There. Yeah. I think we took off at midnight. Yeah. To come back, and we landed in Omaha. Couldn't land in Lincoln. Landed in Omaha like at three or three thirty in the morning. That was terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that was tough. I can't sleep on planes either. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, Andy is calling a shot in the chat room. He's got Iowa beating Penn State. Wow. That would be an upset. I, I think he learned. He picked against Iowa multiple times. Now he's... Is he picking against them or picking them to cover? He says, Iowa going to beat PSU. Oh, wow. That's a bad That's a that's call a bad right thing. there. <laughs> Andy, you're a brave man in the uh, YouTube chat room. Folks, buckle up with the phone. Now, a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Still fire off a text to us, 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap up the show next. There's room at the table, saving you money on every gallon at a CVA fuel site. Central Valley Ag offers a five cent per gallon discount at the pump to CVA fuel card holders. Now, for a limited time, get a five cent discount and be entered to win two VIP tickets to a Husker football game when you get a new or additional CVA fuel card. Sign up to win at CVAcoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co op of Husker Nation. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. I'm going to show you my steps for making the perfect radio ad. This one's about innovation refunds and the ERC. First step, be relatable. I like pizza and puppies. Two, cold hard info. The ERC is a tax credit for eligible businesses that kept employees on payroll in 2020 and 2021. So if you qualify, Innovation Refunds Network of Independent Tax Attorneys could help you claim it. Three, go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your... Put the power of BHA Real Estate to work for you. BHA will set you up with the best real estate agent in your new town. Have a house to sell first? No problem. They can assist you with that as well. With over 70 years of experience, BHA has a network to ensure one of the biggest transactions in life will be handled with care that you deserve and the service that you can trust. Give BHA Real Estate a call today for all your relocation needs. 308-324-5581. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Woodhouse Auto Family, there is your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We have just a couple minutes left here on our Wednesday night show tomorrow night. It's the volleyball show. Head coach John Cook here, hour one. Hour two, we'll have comments from Matt Rural. He's going to meet with the media tomorrow after practice. Will he give us a lean on the quarterback? No. 
<laughs> I'm kind of with you. I don't think he probably will. No. He'll probably say Jeff's getting better. Yeah. Probably what he'll say. Uh, we'll have that. And also, we're going to have another installment of your podcast series about the 100 years of Memorial Stadium. Yeah, this one was a fun one. I sat down with the 80 Trevor Alberts to talk about that 92 Colorado game. Yeah. He had some fun stories. So, and, and Ron Brown is a part of it, this one too. I talked to Ron Brown both about 92 and 94 Colorado. So that one will be next, Those 94 be Colorado. Interviews. And Damon Benning will, will be a part of that one. So, but uh, Trev's got some really fascinating. Good. His memory is really, you know, for as much as you and I sit here and like, what happened last week? <laughs> we can't remember what happened yeah. like a year ago. He has like such a good memory and details of what happened that in that game. That game had a nickname. It was like a Halloween, Halloween game. Massacre. Halloween Massacre. Yep. 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 He said uh, at the end, he was like, I cannot confirm nor deny. Um, I may or may not have seen portions of the field goal post out later that night. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of the last times the post came down. Evan Remember Morrison. when we had that discussion on the show that yep. one time and everyone was telling their stories it's, about when they saw the field goal It's post. one of the last times that the, the post came down at Memorial Stadium. Was when that did they in install the ones at just lower? You think... Is Colorado going to rush the field every time this year? We're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> so uh, that's all tomorrow night on the program. Friday, we only have an hour because Husker volleyball pregame starts at 7. They have their conference opener at 8 with Ohio State. There is a doubleheader tonight going on in BTN, Illinois, Indiana. In set two, Indiana won the first set. So conference volleyball is here. How about that? The non-conference is done. Football will be done with the non-conference after Saturday's game. Flying by. Sure you is. also forgot to mention Cole's joke of the week. Yeah, yeah, that's in there tomorrow night, too. <laughs> what did he get last week? Got an eight and a half from some people? He yeah. did okay. That was an okay joke. Yeah. It was below average. Wasn't that what Art said or something? Was it Art or Tim? It was Art. Said uh, it was a below average, yeah. Below, because he had the B, the B joke jokes B for a couple weeks. The week before. Uh, it's all good stuff. So we'll have a full show tomorrow night and then just an hour show for you on Friday where we got to do picks. And Searles is not going to be with us for picks. He has sent his picks in, though, for us. He's completely off the grid for like eight days. Remember he, <laughs> Remember he tried to call us or text us? He'd go up to a high point as high as he could go. And he called me. Um, it was, oh, gosh, what game was it? And he, he, was, he was whispering. He was like, what happened with this? What, what's the? <laughs> he was trying to be quiet so he didn't scare off the elk. But So he's actually going to miss... This next, this upcoming week's edition of Sideline Slice. So yeah. I have a special guest that's going to be oh, filling cool. in for him. So we're not discontinuing because Jeremiah's no, well, out of It's the going into Michigan week. We can't. We no can't miss doubt. a week. So he gave me the okay on, on the guest. Should I uh, let people know or should we just leave it a surprise? No doubt. All right. So that's, <laughs> we'll look forward to that next week here on the program. So, yeah, they, it's just so, I mean, it, it's frustrating to me because we look forward to football season every year and you blink and you're like, well, almost halfway through. It's just crazy how fast it goes. It's wild. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks to David. Did a great job with us here tonight. Cole, Cole had to, to motor out of here, so he took off a little bit ago. But uh, uh, David's taking good care of us here on the program tonight. So looking forward to the next two shows. Looking forward to hearing the AD, the boss, tomorrow talking about that Halloween massacre, that 92 game against the Buffaloes. Uh, that both teams were ranked really high, and the Oscars took it to him on that uh, day in Memorial Stadium in, in October. I told you I, I hadn't seen a lot of film of Trev playing, and I went back and watched that game. He was a baller. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Buckus Award winner, a high draft pick of the Colts, yeah. I mean, it, you, I'd seen, like, some, some highlight clips, but a full game, how much he dominated that game, it, uh, he was... He's solid. <laughs> yeah, really good player. Really, really good player. He He's modest about it, too. He doesn't really want to talk a lot about it. He playing. doesn't like to harp on the 90s at all. Like, he's, like, ready to move on and, and embrace this this generation. Folks, have a show. A great night. Good show tonight. Go Big Red. We'll be here again tomorrow. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you.
Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. From the University of Nebraska Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. Engineering professor Ronald Fowler has been named a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors, the highest professional honor among academic inventors. As director of UNL's Midwest Roadside Safety Facility, Fowler has played a key role in developing innovative roadside safety technologies that are used around the world. Fowler has earned eight U.S. patents and three foreign patents over his 35-year career. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. America, it's time to gear up and get out there in a new Ford vehicle. And it all starts at your local Ford dealer during the Discover Summer Sales Event. Choose from a great selection of trucks and SUVs equipped with the tech and comfort you need to discover your best summer ever. With a large inventory in stock, now is the best time to trade in, trade up, and discover summer with Ford. Now get 3.9% financing for 66 months plus up to 37